Hi everyone, welcome to Elbow Lake Environmental Education Centre. I'm Emily Verhoek, the Outreach and Teaching Coordinator for the Queen's University Biological Station. And I'm Aaron Zaldardo, the Operations and Stewardship Manager. Today we're going to teach you about some ice safety as well as ways for you to get on the ice and ice fish yourself. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. In this first video, we're going to focus on ice safety and the equipment that you need to safely access a frozen water body. Some things to consider before you head out fishing onto the lake. No ice is ever considered safe ice. And just because you may see fresh tracks out there or indeed see people out on the lake, that doesn't mean that the ice is safe. You must verify this for yourself. Uh, and to do that, you'll use a spud bar and you'll also have to punch test holes to check the ice depth. Uh, another thing to, to consider before you head out fishing is to look at a lake map that shows the depth profile of that lake. Not only is this a good option to figure out uh, certain areas to fish, but it also may show you areas that may be potentially dangerous to access. Uh, these things include um, areas that have moving water, so around dams, uh, creek inflows, uh, or areas that just, for example, are marshy. Um, these types of areas tend to have very thin ice or no ice at all. Uh, another thing to consider are things like man-made structures such as docks or buoys. Uh, these areas tend to heat up in the sunlight, which can cause the ice to be weak around them. Okay, so before we go out onto the ice to go fishing, I'd like to take a, a minute here to talk about some safety equipment that you should have with you before you head out onto the lake. So first off, uh, two, or one of the most important things you can have are ice picks. So these are an example of a pair of ice picks that have a handle, they have a strap or a cord that goes around your neck. And they also, when depressed, have spikes in the end of them. So this is to help you should you fall through the, the ice, these are to help you self-rescue. Uh, another very important piece of safety equipment is a life jacket. Uh, I'm wearing one here. Uh, this helps you stay afloat again should you go through the ice. So other types of personal flotation devices include floater suits. Uh, so instead of just wearing a life jacket, a vest type life jacket like I'm wearing here, uh, it's actually built into the jacket and snow pants that you would wear onto the ice. Um, and then an, it's not a flotation device per se, but another form of safety equipment that you can wear is a dry suit. Uh, so this is where if you were to fall through the, uh, fall through the ice into the water, uh, your body would remain uh, dry. Another piece of safety equipment that you should have with you is a rope or a throw rope bag. So this is used to throw to somebody should they fall through the, uh, the ice and you can help get them out. Another piece of safety equipment is a spud bar. Now this is an essential piece of equipment to help you test whether or not the ice is safe before you're able to proceed further onto the lake. So we'll also include a link to a video um, that will show you how to self-rescue should you fall through the ice. Another thing you'll need to have with you before you go out ice fishing is a valid fishing license. However, there are two time periods in the year in the province of Ontario where you can fish without a license. These are family fishing weekends. Um, so you can look online to find out when those dates are. Okay, when you get down to the lake where you wanna fish, uh, the very first thing that you need to do before you get onto the water is to make sure that you have your proper safety gear on and then check to make sure that the ice is safe where you're going to access. So using my spud bar here, step out and I'm going to probe the ice ahead of me as I walk forward. Okay, so I've walked out onto the ice surface about four or five feet now. Uh, I'm not getting any penetration of the spud bar through the ice. So it, I'm, it's safe to assume that the ice is, is thick enough to hold me right here. But what I'll do now is I'll actually get my ice auger and I'll do a test hole uh, just to get an idea of what the ice depth actually is. Okay, 
So at the spot of where I last um, hit with the spud bar, this is where I'm gonna put my hole, my test hole. So I'm gonna clear away the top snow. And I'm gonna remove the safety guard from the blades of the auger. Set that there so I don't lose it. Set this back down. Put my cover back on the blades. Now I'm gonna get my ice checker. Okay, so once I drilled my test hole here, I went and I got my ice checker. So the ice checker, as you can tell, it's a homemade uh, piece of wood here. But what it does is it has uh, a scale, a ruler, if you will, um, that allows me to get an idea of how thick the ice is. So what I'm gonna do is put the ice checker in, slide it under so it's caught the bottom of the ice, and then pull it out. And here I can see that the wet mark comes up to about nine inches. So this indicates to me that we have nine inches of good ice here to work with. So here we can see the ice profile. Uh, within the top inch, inch and a half, we can see there's a white layer of ice and below that we can see a black uh, layer of ice, which is actually clear ice, but it, it looks black because it's uh, reflecting the, the darkness of the water below. The difference between black ice and white ice is simply uh, hardness. So black ice is the hardest ice you can have, whereas uh, the white ice above that um, is not nearly as strong because it's not as solid uh, as the black ice. So when you're going out fishing, the more black ice you have, the safer it's going to be. So to access a lake safely and, and to, to be safe while you're fishing, you need to have at least three inches of good black ice. Uh, as, we talk, as we spoke about earlier, the difference between white ice and black ice comes down to strength. Uh, black ice has, uh, uh, one inch of black ice strength-wise has the equivalent to two inches of white ice. So if you were to go out onto a lake uh, that was maybe not quite as frozen, you would need to have six inches of white ice to be safe. Uh, we recommend to always go fishing with a partner uh, for safety purposes. And when you are traveling across a lake or, or a water body to get to a fishing location, you want to make sure that you're following in a straight line. Uh, that way you know that the line that you're on and, and that your partner who may be following you is on is good safe ice. Okay, so now that we've, uh, we've drilled our test hole, we've determined that the ice is safe here to access. Uh, what we'd want to do is we would, wherever we want to go fishing, we want to spud our way out. So every six or so feet, we're going to poke down with our spud bar to make sure we still have good solid ice. Um, and what you would do if this was a, a lake that you have not been to yet and you do not know the ice conditions, you would want to do, you'd want to repeat this step uh, every 10 or 15 feet or so as you go along. Uh, that way you could definitely make sure that all of the ice is good and safe. Uh, since we've been here before um, recently, uh, we're not going to do as many test holes, but we will spud our way across to where we want to go fishing. Okay, we've arrived at our fishing location. Now the next steps are to clear the snow off, punch our hole, and we're ready to fish. <laughs> 